Jesus gave us the eternal gospel, the greatest command is love. Love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, your whole being. That's the first greatest command. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. For when you know who God is, that he is love, Father, Son, and Spirit eternally united in other-centered, self-giving love, you start to learn how to love others as yourself, as Jesus did, laying down your life for them, not selfishly or lustfully, but self-givingly, centering your life on serving others as Jesus served us. These are the great commands. It's the whole Christian life is agape. It is defined as the life of Father, Son, and Spirit and our participating in it. There's a place way up the mountainside. Now there is the opposite of the great command or greatest command. This is called iniquity or anomia in Greek. That means lawlessness. That is breaking the law. We see this both in the Old and New Testament. The Jerusalem Council in Acts, the apostles define this by basically saying, avoid things related to idols and avoid things related to sexual immorality. For this was the whole history of Israel and why Israel went into captivity. It is because they started worshiping other gods. Moses in the Torah, in the Ten Commandments, the first commandment is to love God. This is the whole Torah, and it's the whole prophets as well. Have no other gods before me, no other gods beside me. And throughout the Old Testament, we see Israel going to other gods, going to Baal, going to Asherah, going to Moloch, going to the gods of the nations, they're called to be separate from them. They're called to be holy. Yes, those gods are real. They are fallen beings who left the service of the one true eternal God. They are created beings who are supposed to serve God and to serve humanity. There's a place up on the mountainside Where the world is standing still But they didn't want to serve humanity. They wanted their own worship, and humans gave worship to those beings and called them their gods, and in so doing, they became enslaved to those beings, those gods who are the gods of the nations. But they are not true gods. <laughs> they are fallen spirits. Paul says you are, there are many lords and many gods, but there is for us one true Lord and God. It is our Lord Jesus Christ and his Father, our Abba, by the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Spirit, we are to focus on them totally and not to fall for the tricks of these other gods of the world. They do exist, and they are seeking worship, and they use idols. And this is the commandment also that Moses was given. Do not worship idols. And throughout, again, the history of Israel, they were going to idolatry over and over, making idols for themselves and at times uh, sacrificing their children to Moloch and doing horrific things. We are called as Christians to serve the one true God with our whole being and not to syncretically or blendingly blend the one true God with other gods and serve him thinking we can do the other technologies of other gods, whether it be yoga, whether it be tarot cards or crystals or idols or anything, we are called to repudiate those things, to leave those things. I can hear the piper play. And every time the song begins. You just deal my heart away. And focus completely on Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. We are not idol worshippers. We are worshippers of the one true God. We are not worshippers of Zeus and Hermes or Jupiter or 
uh, you name the God again, from whatever country, we are called out of them, come out of them, my people, and follow me, worship me, serve me, love me, your true God, the Father, Son, and Spirit with your whole being. The second commandment goes along with the first. It is just the outflow of it. When we know who God is, we know how to love our neighbor because we know who our neighbor is. They're made in the image and likeness of God. So the second iniquity is the breaking of the commandment of love of neighbor. And this is what happened in the history of Israel again. And it happened in the history of the church as well. That when people followed false gods, things, and even uh, money, uh, power, sex came along with it. That is, idolatry is followed with adultery. And that is every type of uniting oneself with another outside of marriage between what is the image and likeness of God, man and woman. So every type of sexual immorality, Paul lists those uh, extensively in 1 Corinthians and in other places. He shows that we are to avoid the worldly way of uniting ourselves with others. Agape husbands are to agape their wives <laughs> as Christ loves his church. Husbands and wives, they're meant to be one and one flesh with one another. But to unite oneself with a prostitute, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians, that is to defile the body, to defile the temple of God. And when we unite ourselves with others in sexual perversion, whatever color or letter or uh, type that may be, with any other person besides one's lifelong married partner of the opposite gender, opposite sex, then we are committing iniquity. We are falling back into darkness. We are not worshiping and cannot worship the true God if we are in adultery as well. For throughout the Old Testament, adultery is seen as idolatry as well. The two are equivalent with one another. It's whoring, whoring after other gods, whoring after other gods with our spirit and with our body. For the body and the spirit are one. So when the spirit goes into idolatry, the body goes into adultery. When the body goes into adultery, the spirit goes into idolatry. The two are in, are interconnected, the spirit and the body. So what do we do in the cases where we may have fallen into these things? Realize there's no condemnation for you ultimately in Christ Jesus by giving yourself to him as he has given himself to you. Repent, change your mind, change your life. He can help you change everything in your life by giving yourself to him as he has given himself to his Abba Father in the Holy Spirit. And he will transform your life if you've fallen back into darkness or have been living a life in darkness as I was, he can set you free. He has set you free by his life, death, and res resurrection. He has completely set you free from the sin, the iniquity of idolatry. He brings you back into his kingdom, into the kingdom of light, seats you on his Abba Father's throne. He Already did this even when you were his enemy. Even when you were dead in your trespasses, he loved you and saved you and raised you up and seated with you with him in the heavenly places. So he calls you and I and everyone now to live the law of love. You do not define love. God is love. Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit is true, eternal, self-giving love. And we are called to participate in that divine nature and to love as they are love to live in that law of love as they have defined it. It is not burdensome. It is not grievesome. It is the most beautiful thing in the universe because it holds all things. Love holds all things together and unites all things. When we do not love properly or think we can define love for ourselves, our society, our culture falls into disrepair. It falls into darkness and dissolution. So return, 
brothers and sisters, in every aspect of your life with loving the Lord your God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, your whole being, and learning to love your neighbor as yourself, as Jesus did. Pure, other-centered, self-giving love. You are love because you are made in the image and likeness of God. Focus your life completely on Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. I bless you, my brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and King, Jesus Christ.